Cool. All right. So, hey, everybody. Whoa, this is a bad place for a heavy laptop. That's a better place. I'm just going to do this. So, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm James Everett. Uh, whoa, and I'm really, really loud. Naturally, I'm loud. And when you give me amplification, I get louder. Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, we've never done this before. Um, none of us here today have never done this specific thing that we're about to do. I apologize in advance if it blows up in my face in spectacular fashion. So let's just like try this out. Um, as Liam mentioned, uh, yeah, my name is James. I'm a lead game designer at Magic Leap uh, and Weta Workshop over in Wellington, New Zealand. As you can probably tell, I'm not from New Zealand. I'm from Canada. I'm from the West Coast, which is the warm bit before you get to the frozen wastelands. Uh, <laughs> Go visit the mountains, the snow's nice. Um, and I'm also chairperson of the New Zealand Game Developers Association, and I've only been doing that for about three months, and I am constantly overwhelmed by the awesomeness that is the Kiwi game developer scene, and so we're trying to do lots and lots of new and exciting things, and you know, not set too many fires along the way. So, um, we've never done this before, and I've never done this before, uh, but that has absolutely always been true for me, and it is absolutely true for you if you create things, because every time you make something, it's never existed before in the history of the world. It might be similar to other things you've seen, it might be inspired by things you've seen or done or heard or whatever, but the thing that you make from the moment that you create it has never before existed in the history of the world. Kind of heavy, sorry. Um, so we're in this together uh, right now. We're going to build this talk, um, so no pressure. Um, you've got 60 seconds to ask me questions, and we'll get to exactly that. I'm a big fan of structure and process, and I use constraints all the time in my work to try not to get overwhelmed by the possibility space that is in front of me because it's effectively infinite. Um, so what we're going to do is you're going to get 60 seconds to ask me questions. We're going to divide up the number of questions we get by the time remaining, and I'm going to try to answer every question that you give me, talking just as fast, uh, with in that amount of time. So the deal is, um, no limits, you can ask me pretty much anything, um, but I'm not gonna break any NDAs, and the list of NDAs I have signed over the years is long and mighty, and if you're aware of what Magic Leap does, even generally, you'll know that I can't talk much about that, sorry. Um, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna have 15 seconds of silence. Um, Rami talked about asking good questions this morning, and uh, one good way to you know, ask questions is to stop and think about them. So I'm gonna show you a vague collection of a bunch of the stuff that I've worked on, touched, been involved with, or been crushed by. And you're going to have 15 seconds to look at that, and then we're going to get 60 seconds. I'll leave the list on the screen and ask me questions. We're going to try writing them all down, and hopefully uh, this works out. So for 15 seconds, here's the list of stuff. Whoa, no it's not. You jerk. <laughs> you absolute jerk. Okay, I'm going to time it manually. So 15 seconds, have a look at that. That was about 15 seconds, okay. So for 60 seconds, um, what I would like is your questions. Now, I had a plan here and I don't think it's gonna work out, so that's fine. Let's see if I can make this my, no, you're the worst, just the worst. See, this is what happens when you're like, we're gonna do it live, and, and you do it live and then it explodes. So if we do, oh, why would you not display that? Oh, you are the worst, okay, screw it. Um, I'm just going to turn off display mirroring, open display preferences, open projector calibration, note, none of those things. Um, use up display. There we go. Okay. So, what? <laughs> Hacks. Total hacks. Okay. So, questions based on anything that's on there or anything that comes into your head. Okay, go. How does my wish start? Your iron rigidity. My iron rigidity? <laughs> my what? Rigid schedule. Rigid schedule. Oh, rigid schedule of influence. Rigid schedule. Holy crap, no. Um, influence whatever. Okay, that's going to be a weird one, but we'll try that. Okay, cool. How do I become a people person? Oh, I. Ha <laughs> ha 
because I'm shit at typing and changing things. This is a lot of stuff anyways. Um, sure, let's just make it big and try it out. Let's see what happens here. Can I expand you? I can. Okay, screw it. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven questions. Uh, no, actually ten questions because I'm cheating. I'm sorry about the weather room, but I can't just talk about that at all. So, ten questions. How many minutes do we have left? Who's time to do? <laughs> okay, so... You, for, left? Oh, okay. Um, you just can you just hold up a finger like on every minute? Let's okay. Let's try and do this. So um, rigid schedule influence. I don't actually have a rigid schedule. I have a everything changes all the time schedule. And what I try to do is uh, filter that schedule day by day into pieces so that I don't go crazy. Um, how do I become a people person? I talk to people. Just like a bit glib, but the just do part of things that we've talked about before, like been come up again and again today, that's really it, you know. Um, I have a bit of a, t I'm a raging extrovert, so that helps, um, but it's, I found this to be true of everyone, which is basically you just get out there and do it. Uh, what I learned as a freelance designer that I took back to uh, working with studios, um, that's actually really tricky because it was a while ago, but I think to me it was, the, probably the biggest lessons were around communication. It's easy to take for granted when you sit next to someone just how much information passes between you uh, moment to moment, day to day. When I was freelancing and I was away from everyone else, I had to make sure that the information I gave them was like tight and exactly on point because otherwise things would get lost in the mix. So I brought some of that back with me, I think. Um, the giant experience between Canada and New Zealand. No, Canada to New Zealand is probably the furthest distance you can possibly travel for the least amount of cultural change possible. <laughs> no joke. It's great. I love it there. Don't get me wrong, but that's it. That's like it. Um, okay, I got two minutes. One. Minute. Uh, what helped me get in when I relocate? I've always moved somewhere with a job, so I have never relocated without going. I follow projects and people. So if someone is awesome that I really want to work with, or a game is really awesome that I really want to work on, or something is exciting, I have always followed the thing that combines what I'm most excited about with the people and the projects I want to learn the most from. Um, favorite country to work in? Uh, pff, I don't know, New Zealand, because it doesn't freeze me to death. Montreal and Toronto are really cold, but amazing cities. Uh, best project I've ever worked on and why? Smoothest project I've ever worked on was Madagascar Carts. We had a kart racing game with the Madagascar animals. We did it in 12 months. We shipped that thing on time, on schedule. It was fun to play, and families loved it. Um, but favorite, I don't know, it's hard to say. Um, why did I leave Ubisoft? I didn't want to. I had no plans to. Just like when I left Chi and Pickpock, I had no plans to, to leave there either. It was just, again, people and project. Um, I knew some of the crew working at Magic Leap, and they said, do you want to come and do something insane? And I said, 
Yeah, actually, because I'm fairly convinced that mixed reality is the future. I don't know when that future arrives, I can't tell you about that, but I'm fairly convinced as a game designer that that's where many, many important things will be happening. So if there's anyone in the world who can give me an opportunity to try to get out ahead of that wave, I was gonna take it. And I still miss my Ubisoft family, don't get me wrong. They're, they're amazing, amazing people in UB Toronto. Um, what kind of, Weta does cool stuff all the time. No, sorry, I can't talk about it. Uh, new IP versus existing IP. Um, Existing IP has a whole lot of answers for you already. New IP, you have to figure out all those things as you go. Um, neither is worse or better. They're both just different sets of challenges. Uh, it's easier to go deep on existing IP fast because you've got a framework in place. Um, and what did I expect to be different between indie and AAA? Um, so I started my career uh, indie, more or less, um, working in first-person shooters 15 years ago in Vancouver and then went to work for hire stuff, did mostly work for hire, some independent stuff, then AAA. Um, the biggest difference, honestly, for me, was just team size. So Splinter Cell Blacklist, Toronto alone was 350 people. There was a couple hundred in T Montreal, 180 or so, I think, in Shanghai, and a test team in Bucharest. Um, that was an experience. That was very intense. So that was pretty big and different. Um, so this did not go nearly as well as I thought, but not nearly as badly as it could have. Thank you all for playing along. Um, this is new and different. So cheers for that. Yay.